Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. What a show yesterday. Man, the world of tomorrow, World's Fair, and all those Trump connections, it was just crazy. With the swamp, the meadows, being like the mead, the meadows, and the connections just went on and on. Now, that was three videos put together that we had basically started down a rabbit hole probably about two years ago. Sometimes I'll do that. I'll re-upload these videos that relate to the current timeline. So you guys can see that these older videos are, they, they basically weather very well, don't they? They're applicable to today. So oftentimes what I'll do is I'll take these older videos and I'll splice them all together. And then so you can see how everything's come full circle. And now here we are, the father of the smack scene. And it's been proven through and through. This is his claim to fame. The first president, really, since the polio president, to enact a worldwide... I mean, obviously, we don't run all the other countries, but we are the most powerful country in the world. So... We are basically the example for the world. So that's a big deal. People say, why do you, why are you still on about Trump? Well, there's many, many reasons. A snake in the grass has deceived more Christians than any other president that I can remember. The last time so many Christians were deceived was under the Bush presidencies, where, we, where they were tricked into going to fight for their country, thinking there was a kind of threat. That was a big deal too and we were on that case as well weren't we with with a liberal person you already know what you're getting don't you you already know that they want to take life in the womb you already know all the things that they represent that's easy to identify when there's a snake in the grass bearing his fangs ready to puncture humanity with doses that's when I have an issue and God wants me to stand up and warn people. So if you're still feeling ill feelings towards me for focusing on Trump, that means you still love Trump. Okay. That means you're still stuck in the right left paradigm. Now let's keep going with this because one of you asked me to look at this X-Files episode. Now what are the odds that a 1995 X-Files episode with the date of you know what the crapper hole can't even say the date anymore you have to look on your screen if you say the date the algorithms come after you what are the odds that this really old episode from 1995 has anything to do with everything we've been talking about well you would think that the odds would be close to none right well watch this there's actually a character in this episode called Moro, like Tomorrowland. And she sees visions of the world's fair. She actually writes it down on a notepad. Here's the problem. When this episode aired, it would be decades later that the film Tomorrowland came out. So... Of course, Tomorrowland was filmed at the fictitious 1949 World's Fair. It was prominent in that film. But again, that didn't come out until decades after this episode of X-Files. So there's a connection, isn't there? This Tomorrowland. What is Tomorrowland? Well, it's some kind of portal. And it exists at Flushing Meadows Corona Park. And I think all this has to do with demonic entities posing as aliens, injecting humanity with things. Because the 1949 World's Fair, I'm sorry, 1939 World's Fair, showcased a giant hypodermic needle and a bolus. It was called the Trilon and Parisphere. And the bolus had a serpent wrapped around it. Now, that 1939 World's Fair was centered on pharmacies. 
and Apollo, which is Apollo. You, you notice how things have come full circle from 1939 to now. We have Apollo back then with polio and piercing things with Apollo Zero, which was the worldwide inoculations. And now we have Apollo, which was Trump, piercing the world with inoculations. And Apollo's twin sister Artemis flying to the moon, supposedly. Now, what was so special about 1939? Well, they were preparing the world for the first worldwide inoculation. <clears throat> now, I'm going to say that again, and I want you to listen very closely. Enoch Cole Asian. Enoch Cole Asian. Culling Enoch. You can't make this up. Now, at this 1939 World's Fair, thanks to the subscribers who sent this to me, here is the Hall of Pharmacy. It was called. And here you see murals, these super creepy murals. This one, let me scroll down here, looks like a mad scientist crouching over these beakers and pouring this in. I can't even tell what this image is. It looks like this guy's head, but look, that would be a really creepy head. And then it almost looks like an alien, like alien standing around a circle. Now, obviously, if we had a higher resolution image of this, we would be able to see exactly what's being depicted here. But what it looks like is a man's face, like a creepy, distorted face pouring. This was from the 1939 World's Fair. This image is really creepy. This guy's got a vial. And he's pouring it out into what appears to be some kind of like a stream. A yellow stream. Yellow represents sickness. And it's almost as if people are getting baptized. Now, I didn't find this. One of you guys found this. And made the baptism connection. But this is crazy. And he's all jesus out. Look at him. He's got like the white robe. Mad scientist. Slash. You know. What do you call it? Some kind of deity he looks like. like some kind of a god. Now. Why do I say. That the hall of pharmacy. Was front and center. In the 1939 world's fair. Well, here's the Hall of Pharmacy right here, the outside of it. Here's a third mural. And as you can see, it's kind of hard to make out. But it is right next to the Trilon and Perisphere. At the center of the World's Fair 1939. What would it be like to go back in time to this World's Fair and see what was really going on behind the scenes, behind the facade? Now, let me give you the backdrop of this episode, and then we'll get into the rest of today's show. So what was going on in this X-Files episode from 1995? Let me make sure you guys are with me, and we'll get into this a little bit. Fridays are always my favorite day. There you guys are. Right on. Sounds like everything's good. All right. Enoch Cole Asian. Unbelievable. They like to hide this, all their plans and their words, don't they? Now, here's the backdrop of the episode before we get into this montage. This is off the rails. So Scully and Mulder, which are the two detectives, are trying to solve a serial murder case, but it's no ordinary case. One of the detectives, which is the lady you see here, is helping them solve the case and she's very close to the case and she actually claims to have seen the perpetrator the problem is is that the description she gave was what he looked like in 1939 the world's fair now scully and Mulder basically figured out that she's actually the one doing the murders 
because she's been genetically channeling the serial killer because she is his granddaughter and she literally shapeshifts into kind of a lookalike of this 1939 serial killer now the interesting thing here is that it's inferred that the needle of the world's fair and the trilon and the perisphere have something to do with why she was being genetically possessed in other words the needle is the catalyst for the genetic transfer it's the portal of the soul transfer let's watch do you remember anything else there's a strange picture on the wall behind him it's a building like the washington monument now she mentions the Washington Monument. And remember, we had already compared the Washington Mon Monument to the Perisphere syringe needle, hadn't we? Remember all the needles we found around the planet? Hidden in the landscape from Google Earth. Washington Mall, basically a long hypodermic needle connecting to the Capitol. With the point pointing right at uh, the Lincoln Memorial via the Washington Monument. You can go right now to Google Earth and outline it and it is clear as day. And that needle actually aligns to 88 degrees on the map. Well, I hadn't seen this episode of X-Files, but yet she's confirming everything we just said. She's comparing the Perisphere and Trilon to the Washington Monument. Let's keep listening here. Different and there's a, a big circular thing beside it. it looks something like this what do you think it is now i've got these scenes kind of scrambled up you can't just play through you know the, this kind of stuff copyright stuff because the algos pick it up and then the video gets suppressed or you could get a strike so what i've done is i break these scenes up and i kind of scramble them around and that's enough to, you know, get past everything. I don't like to share too many of my secrets because then people just go and report it and then they fix the algos, right? This is why I'm kind of secretive about how we decode these things. But, you know, people, some people will say, oh, well, you know, he must be working for the other side because he gets to play copyright material and never gets in trouble. There is a trick to it, okay? Now, so she draws the perisphere in trial. And watch this. Now let's think about what this is. Trilon and perisphere. The trilon is the needle. The perisphere is the globe. T and P. Toilet paper. Flushing the toilet meadows. Flushing meadows. Trump toilet paper on his shoe when he walked into Air Force One. The toilet paper shortage. And Trump's fascination with flushing Toilets. Let's keep watching. You can get pictures of these on postcards all over Times Square. These were the symbols of the 1939 World's Fair. Could be the Trilon and the Perisphere. Have you ever been to New York City? No, never. So now you're seeing the connection between possession and the needle. You know why they might have been in your dream? No idea at all. Now you're going to hear Mulder explain how this soul transfer works. And that's what the serpent is trying to tap into. Let's play this back here. But what if more than biological traits get passed down from generation to generation? What if I like sunflower seeds because I'm genetically predisposed to liking them? But children aren't born liking sunflower seeds. Environment shape them. Behavior patterns are taught. Well, on a basic cellular level, we're the sum total of all our ancestors' biological matter. So, this is what the serpent's trying to tap into. He's trying to tap into the serpent genes within us. It doesn't work on everyone because not all of us are completely mixed up with the seed line of the serpent. Some of us are seed of the woman. Could that be the virgins talked about in Revelation? 
Could it be that we got down all the way to the end of time and there's only a few hundred thousand or a few hundred million of us left who weren't mixed with the seed line? It sounds almost impossible because if you buy into the theory that Cain's father was the devil, if you buy into that theory, then throughout time, most of humanity would have already been all mixed up, except for the 12 tribes of Israel, which were commanded not to mix with the Canaanites. And now you know why God would give such a directive. If you don't know, or if you don't believe that Cain was fathered by the devil, then you would think, wow, that's kind of bigoted, God. Why would you tell those people not to mix with other people? That's, that's right out of Bigotry 101. That's the judgment that the serpent is levying against the Most High. He's the accuser. But when you realize that the seed line had to remain pure so that Jesus could be born out of the tribe of Judah, then it makes all the sense in the world, doesn't it? Let's keep watching here. Jung wrote about it when he talked about the collective unconscious. It's genetic memory, Scully. Now, there are countless stories of twins who were separated at birth, went up in the same occupation, marrying the same kind of people, each naming their child Waldo. Of course, you've got the twin aspect, which again, we've told you guys, the Gemini spirit, the two spirits infecting one host body. The dark spirit possessing the the seed of the woman, right? And this is why the serpent is wrapped around the egg. It's attacking the woman. The very first prophecy in the Bible. There will be enmity between your seed and the seed of the serpent. He will bruise you in the heel. You will bruise him in the head. Some translations say different. Strike, bruise. It's all the same though. And so... This is what's going on. Serpent has always come after the seed of the woman. And that's what this is all about. Scully, this is what I think. I think that Coakley's memories, his compulsions, have been passed on genetically to his granddaughter, BJ. That's what's driving her to kill. Wait, well, you honestly think that BJ is capable of murder? No, but Coakley is, and that's who BJ has become. That's outrageous. So you're saying that BJ's nightmares are real? That, that she's out there killing these women and carving sister on them? Now, there's an aspect to this where... Moro, B.J. Moro, who's the, the detective who's killing these people, who's channeling her grandfather. There's an, an aspect to this where she actually carves the word brother and sister into the chest of the victims before she kills them. So they find them with brother and sister carved in their chests. What could that mean? Hmm, I am not my brother's keeper. Isn't that what Cain said? Why would he say that? Because he had a different father. If you were to really look at that translation, does it really say, am I my brother's keeper? It probably really translates into something like, is he really my brother? Since my father was the devil. So then, this is Moro. You can see how she's kind of shape-shifted. She's still a woman, but she's got the rash that the guy had on his face. Her hair slicked back. So she, it's kind of like shape-shifting. She doesn't like literally shape-shift, but she basically becomes possessed. Now, this was the original detective from earlier in the episode. And she's basically taken on the traits, the genetic traits of the 1939 serial killer. They show the World's Fair right there. This, this is just, this might be one of the most profound and convincing findings that have been discovered on this channel. Flushing Meadows, Corona Park, where Trump grew up. And then, of course, he would be the Corona president. Really? Really? It almost reminds me of how George Bush was born on the exact day and year that Dewey, the former governor of New York, established the World Center of Trade. He established the board on the day Bush was born, literally in the same year. How is it that these presidents are coming full circle in, and then manifesting the very thing? Of course, Bush was the president under which the towers fell, 
So there's the link there. There's the completed circle. And then Trump, his completed circle would be this 1939 World's Fair where his family's billboard appeared with an RX in, stylized into the name, prescription. And he lived literally a couple hundred yards from here in Queens, right next to Corona Park. And then he would be the president under which Corona happened? Really? And the whole world would get stuck with needles? Uh, I don't think that's an accident, you guys. There's something spiritually manifesting here. So then she tries to kill her grandmother. You're... Notice Jesus in the background. This is the true source of healing. So you've got the true source of healing next to the false source of healing, which is over here. The trial on a parasphere. Him. See how they're juxtaposed? And in between, you have the genetic bloodlines. You have pictures in between the two. You know what you're doing? We are continuing with genetic testing on Detective Morrow. Detective Morrow, like Tomorrowland. But the result Unbelievable. results so far are inconclusive. Evidence suggests the presence of a mutator gene that has activated previously dormant genes. Mutator genes, dormant genes. Let me turn this up a little bit for you guys. Mutator genes, dormant genes. Are you starting to wake up now? Do you see what's happening? In order to determine whether the pregnancy could have been a catalyst for the transformation. We have yet to determine the effects on the fetus. Detective Morrow has not demonstrated any further physiological changes. Extensive blood work and psychological testing has been conducted. Amniocentesis results show no genetic abnormalities. So she basically goes crazy. This is the zombie apocalypse as a result of what we just went through. People are starting to wild out. If you haven't seen it yet, go and look what's trending with police videos. You will see people losing their minds. Normal people running at police, police having to put them down. No fear of knowing that they're going to die. This has become an epidemic. This is the new epidemic. Chromosome testing has determined the child's sex to be male. Lieutenant Tillman has petitioned to adopt the child, and the case will soon be presented to the courts. So, that is the X-Files tying directly into yesterday's show. Hopefully you guys were able to see yesterday's show. If you haven't, go back and look at the documentary that I put together on yesterday's show, and all of this will make sense. Now, I'm noticing some people are trying to downplay the rabies aspect to all this. Do not do that, because it very much is a part. It's already happening right now. We've seen a shift in people's behavior, haven't we? So if you think that they're just trying to fear us with this rabies thing, you're sadly mistaken. And you'll see, just like everything else, or a lot of the stuff that we present on this channel. At first it sounds silly. And then it starts manifesting. Just like the rabies pellets. They started dropping on all of this, the 13 states. Why did they start with 13 states? Here. And we were talking about it last year. When they were only dropping it. In Canada. And now it's happening here. There's something going on. Isn't there? Now. I have. A couple follow up items for today's show and a couple headlines too I want to share with you guys one of you guys found this now it's not often anymore that I get chills from the revelations but this blew me away one of you found that the word fox in Greek is alopex like alopecia. Let me read this. The term alopecia used by physicians dating back to Hippocrates originates from the Greek word for fox, alopex, and was so named due to fur loss seen in fox mange. 
You guys, we just covered the fox the other day, didn't didn't we? And we were talking about rabies, which causes alopecia. Didn't we? And now here we are, full circle, confirming the findings. Fox mange. Now, here is some more of the etymology here. Alopex. And it's technically translated to a shark. Hmm, who's the shark? What's the word for shark? Somebody help everybody out in the chat. You're not allowed to mention his name either. You go to Facebook jail or YouTube jail. Thresher shark. Um, so sharks and foxes are closely related in their etymology. Canidae. I think that means like canine. And down here, the polar fox, actually in the scientific name, is Alopex lagopus. That's a polar fox. So, now we know that another individual who predated the usage of this word, because look, if you look back here, they try to say that the origins of this word alopex only went back to 1600s. The first use of the phrase alopecia only went back to the 1600s, but we found a much older usage of the word, didn't we? That predated this by thousands of years, or a thousand years. Remember, Artemis was found under a willow tree by a man named Alopecus. Willow trees represent hair on the head. So, Artemis arrows cause disease that causes alopecia. That's the takeaway that I'm getting from breaking all this down wow there's the technical translation although this is a little bit off from english to greek fox is alapu but also al it's basically the root word of alopecia and now you know why this whole alopecia thing is at the forefront of the news or was with the award show Willow Smith, Will, Willow Tree, Alopecia, Artemis Launch. These people are literally playing out these ancient forces right before our eyes. All right, what else do we have? Let's get on to this next story here. Now, this is crazy. Again, one of you sent me this. I try to use mostly what you guys send me. Because this is a group effort here, not just me. It's all of us. Look at this. This is what 6G will look like. A hypodermic needle. Are you kidding me? Let's read this and see if there's more clues about what happened in the UK. We're stunned after massive 15 meter pole appeared outside of our homes with no warning even the council is baffled really they call it an eyesore we know that eyes are portals windows to the soul look at when this thing released here this story 8 22 22 22 and 22 is 44 44 and 48 is 4444 is 88. That's a portal. These are going to be the portals to the soul. Residents have been left stunned and confused after a massive 15 meter pole appeared outside of their homes with no warning. The colossal structure on Lime Walk in Chidel, Manchester has also come as a surprise to Stockport Council who are demanding answers from the company who erected it. What's Lime Walk backwards? Claw mill. Like millimeter waves? Claw? That's what I get from that. Sometimes you can spell these words backwards and it has like a secret meaning to it. Now, let's keep reading here because 
they call this thing a mast, which connotates like a ship. Abdul Khan and his son Rahim picture in front of the 6G phone mast on claw the millimeter waves in Chadell Stockport, Greater Manchester. Look at this thing. Right, just right in the middle of the neighborhood. They're, they're in our faces with it. Because they need both components, right? They need to stick you and then they can use the waves is what I think is where all this is headed. A notice stuck on the monstrous pole says it is a place for telecommunications firm IX Wireless. All you do is put an XIX in front of that and you get 19. But it's 9. 9 Wireless. They say they're managing the 6G internet in towns in the north of England, providing gigabit internet at lower prices than providers such as Virgin and BT. But locals are fuming that they were not consulted and are worried about the radiation that it may give off. This is probably a test, so they'll probably be watching these people closely to see if anybody gets sick. It's probably my guess as to maybe what's going on here. And according to this, the locals are concerned. I have a young son. I'm worried about the radiation coming off of it. His bedroom is at the front. I think it's too close to the properties, to be honest with you. Now, if you think this is all hogwash, go watch the new Westworld, in which they have these towers, and they control people's minds. Make them kill each other with tones. Wow. So, that's what's going on with this here. Thanks to the subscriber that sent this to me. Now, i got a couple more stories for you guys. Let me check in with you, and we'll kind of finish up the show here. What a Friday. Friday is when the the big bombs drop, usually. But least amount of people usually turn, tune in on Fridays. That's okay. I'll catch a show on the weekend. But this is when we get these crazy revelations. Now, here's another story. Ancient city with massive palace emerges from a lake in drought-stricken Iraq. Now, the thing that interesting me about this story is that they found cuneiform tablets. Now, do you think that anyone's going to decode these tablets? Probably not, because they probably have some pretty crazy information on them, don't they? I would like to see what these tablets say. Cuneiform is the oldest writing language in the entire world. It's ancient. There could be confirmations about the Bible on these tablets. But are they going to let us know that? Nope. So, the story here, too, is that the planet continues to dry out. So, this is a thing now, isn't it? There have been a lot of stories of rivers drying up all across Europe. Super droughts. And so, yes, I'm concerned about this. Now, they're going to say this is because of climate change. They're doing something, aren't they? They're doing... Let's read this. Years of relentless drought have recently exposed multiple cities, typically submerged in water reservoirs in Iraq. The waters of the Mosul Dam located near Kemun. Now, some people's theories are they're just letting the water out of these dams. I wouldn't argue with that theory. That's possible. They could be simulating a drought, I suppose. This is in near Kemun. In northern Iraq's Kurdistan region, relinquished an ancient city. A team of German and Kurdish archaeologists announced May 30th in a news release. The 3,400-year-old urban center could be Zahiku, Zakiku, an important center in the Matini Empire that ruled modern-day Iraq from 1550 to 1350 BC. brown and dusty, the ruins of the city boast a palace, fortified walls, and towers, a monumental multi-story storage facility, an industrial building. Oh my goodness. The mud flood people are going to come out of the woodwork right now on this one, aren't they? From above, the buildings look grid-like. I mean, you couldn't even build stuff like this that far back in history. How did they build it? 
squared off indents in an otherwise rocky mound. The photo showed, despite decades underwater, the site is stunningly well preserved, partially due to an earthquake that destroyed the city in 1350 BC. Big findings also came in small packages at the excavation site, tucked in the corner of the storage facility. Researchers found five pottery vessels. Here's the photos here. Tucked inside the pottery vessels, they found more than a hundred cuneiform writing tablets for the release. One notable tablet, possibly a letter, remained partially enclosed in its original clay envelope. It is close to a miracle that cuneiform tablets made of unfired clay survived so many decades underwater. All that was hidden will be released. I would like to see what this says, wouldn't you? About 20 miles east, another submerged city vied for attention lurking visible but still unreachable beneath the waters of Dohuk Dam. So these dams have covered up a lot of these ancient sites. That's interesting because dams are the dark pools, the dark waters, obscuring the truth of history. A city abandoned in 1985 has surfaced for the fifth time. Decades underwater have left the village ruins, algae painted, and shell marked. Look at this shocking picture here. That's a boat over this ancient ruin. Look at that. Iraq's devastated drought has wreaked havoc on the northern part of the country since 2021. Southern part for several years longer. Droughts have displaced more than 35,000 people. So, Iraq is going through a drought. Here's some comments down here. So many treasures uncovered due to drought. <laughs> this guy sounds like a bot. Really? The towers fell due to in intense heat and melted still. And collapsed under the pressure. Now, here's our last story for today. Get out your spaghetti. Those of you that live in Tennessee, you probably heard about this story. We've got trucks spilling tons of Alfredo sauce, tomatoes. <laughs> they should maybe rename Alfredo sauce Alf Road O sauce because it's all over the road. Let's play this here. A saucy spillover on I 55 in Mclemore this evening. Look at all that Alfredo sauce. This evening, the Memphis Fire Department says this overturned tractor trailer hit a retaining wall. When that happened, thousands of jars of Five Brothers Alfredo sauce. Five Brothers, that's actually really good Alfredo sauce, believe it or not. Shattered and spilled all over the road. Crews have been cleaning up throughout the evening. There's no word yet on any injuries, but. Yeah, go, I'm sure some of those didn't break open. Just go grab them, right? Get some free Alfredo sauce. You know, bring your pasta. <laughs> he said the same thing I did. Bring your pasta. Anyway, that's interesting. Now, this is on the heels of another truck that spilled tomatoes. That was in California. So from California to Tennessee, trucks are spilling sauce. Now, what could that mean on a spiritual level? I don't know. What do you guys think? Why are trucks spilling tomato and Alfredo sauce? Now, one of my favorite meals I ever ate and made was salmon fettuccine alfredo with capers oh man that is good squeeze a little lemon in there let it simmer up mm -hmm. i might make that today for max so let's go into the chat here alfredo is an american thing oh really get for tablets or not to release it being deciphered but who would say that all right. It's good with shrimp. Mouth-watering. Oh, Barcy says sauce is code. Hmm. Sauce has a long shelf life. As a prepper. Oh, Fox Mulder. Good, good catch there. I didn't even make that connection. Fox... Fox Mulder, right? We've been talking about foxes and alopecia. Didn't he lose his hair too as he got older? Spill the beans, says Dwayne. 
Thanks, Pete. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. All right. What do you guys think about this drought that they're claiming is happening worldwide? What do you guys think about that? That has me concerned because, you know, all these places are drying out. That's not good, you guys. That means the, <clears throat> the food supply is next. What else is going on here? Oh, Emma says he has an addiction. He did he lose his hair too? Alfredo cream milk sacrifice says Saint Lunatic. That's possible. All right. Drain the swamp. Euphrates is drying up too, says Kana. Okay. Drought here in, in Kansas, says Carol. They're draining the lakes and waterways, says Marcy. I think there's probably a lot of that going on, just to, just to add to the effect. Think about it. The more they can simulate the drought, then that will push people to want to accept that climate change is real <clears throat> and that we all need to save the climate, right? So it kind of advances the agenda faster. In fact, that's what the governor of California is using as his excuse to fast track like electric vehicles and getting rid of gas powered cars and all that stuff. He's saying, look, look at the drought. It's the drought. We have to do something. It's a climate emergency. As if the actions of one state is going to affect the weather for the rest of the world. Is what he's acting like. I don't know. Weird. The drain swamp here. That's why the Seminoles couldn't survive any longer, says Rachel. Be afraid of. Blood was spilled. Tomato sauce. Yeah, it could be like the spilling of, yeah, like sacrifice, whatever. That's an interesting angle. About these trucks spilling, spilling tomato. Tomato sauce is obviously probably represents blood, right? Alfredo sauce would be like the, also milk rep represents uh, sacrifice as well. Interesting. Now, I had the unique opportunity yesterday I have some uh, lumber on my property. He might be listening now. And I uh, talked to a gentleman, really nice guy. Came over and basically he has a mobile mill. And he saws up trees for you and turns it into lumber. And I was like, man, that would be really cool if I could build with that, you know. So he came on by yesterday, met him out at the property. I pulled out a chainsaw, was going to work, trying to reduce some of the limbs on some of the trees. And got into a conversation with this gentleman. He wanted his life dream was to work on a dairy. Except the dairy he worked on was a uh it was a an organic dairy. And so we got into these discussions about dairies. Because I remember a discussion that we all had when we realized why they put missing children on milk cartons. Now, let's see who gets the answer to this one, because everybody's here. Why did they put missing children on milk cartons? Remember that video that we did? Let's see who gets it first. What did we come up with as to why that happens? And then I'll tell you the rest of the story of what he told me about dairy farming. All right. Someone says unpasteurized, says Chris. There was a specific reason. I might have to give you a clue here because that was a an old video. All right. Yeah, it is sacrifice, but it goes a step deeper. It's more specific. Uh, milk does mean sacrifice, yes, but there was a more specific reason as to why a child went on a milk carton. Uh, for sale, Mark, you're getting a little bit closer. Okay, you ready for this? It has to do with, yes, the stolen calves. DM got it. Yes. So, in commercial dairy farming, the calf is immediately taken away 
from the mother. The calf gets orphaned and goes missing. They do this because as long as the calf's on the mother, the, uh, and this is what he explained to me yesterday, the, the mother keeps producing colostrum, which is the first milk that gives the calf all its antibodies and all its health. And if they don't take the calf off right away, then it's longer. It takes a longer amount of time for the milk to start the cow to start producing milk. So think about that for a second. Missing children, missing calf. Now, who in their right mind would have put children on a milk cart knowing that that's what happens to calves? Someone did, but yet you look back in history and you can't find the reason why or who put. The children on the milk cartons like who came up with the idea history just conveniently forgets who was the person behind that because that would give us a clue wouldn't it so i was talking to this gentleman and he's like yeah we don't do that on on the organic dairy farms and i'm like wow that's great to hear in fact they leave the calf with the mother as long as possible so the calf can grow up strong and healthy and the mother's happy and then the calf goes to an another mother who is good at nurturing calves. So the calf is never neglected and the world goes around, right? So that was an interesting conversation. Um, I've got about 10 trees that he's going to mill up for me. And he said they're all oak trees, which is neat to hear. So I have a lot of oak wood and uh, maybe at some point build a garage or something. I don't know. But uh, in a deck... But interesting conversation nonetheless. So he's going to come back probably in October and help me out with these trees. So let's see what else is going on here. All the celebrity videos who take a bath in milk. Okay, so let's break this down another level. Why does milk mean sacrifice? Because some of you are probably wondering what that means. Milk is sacrifice... Because in the ancient uh, practice of Lupercalia, the ancient holiday, they would take the milk of like goats. They would mix it with blood and put a knife in it. Wipe knives with it. You can look all this up on the Lupercalia Wikipedia page. And then they would do this. Uh, they would run around. It was like a sacrificial ritual. They would kill a goat and they would kill a dog, I think, or a goat, or a, yeah, a dog and a goat. And they would, and basically, when the milk mixed with the blood, it would turn pink. And that's where our current Valentine's Day pink comes from. It's basically blood mixed with milk. If you can believe that, they both fall on the same day. February 13th through the 15th is Lupercalia. February 14th is Valentine's Day. So they've combined these ancient pagan rituals that really upset God into modern day celebrations. And then people worship the false version of something that God originally had as good. So that's where the milk, as far back as I can take it, came from. Um, it, there may be, it might go back a little bit further in history, but that's as far back as I tracked why milk means sacrifice. So hopefully that helps people who are wondering about that. Yes, Sovelace. Strawberry milkshake. Now you know. And that's where the acrinodrome pink comes from as well. Now you're seeing the whole thing come together. All right. Notice there's a Cupid aspect which is like a, basically a miniature Apollo, right? With his arrow, piercing people, possessing them with the love spirit. That's where all this comes from, you guys. So, what sort of prepping are you doing? Only The only sort of prepping I do is to be out of the beast system and their control mechanism. The lowest amount of taxes you can pay... Uh, no financing, no mortgages, no, you know, uh, n not a lot of material possessions that you have to protect. Uh, real supplies, real goods, such as tools, things you can actually use to produce more things, right? 
Gosh, I got that chainsaw yesterday, you guys. I just about fell out and rolled down the hill. That is hard work. And all I was doing was cutting off like three and four inch limbs. I lasted about 40 minutes and I was like, wow, this is hard work. I was sweating. It wasn't even that hot. It was like 86, 87 degrees. And I'm cutting these limbs off and throwing them in piles just to try to make things easier for this guy when he comes back out. And I was wore out. It's hard work. And I even had a chainsaw. I wasn't even using an axe. Can you imagine trying to use an axe? So, a lot of wood on the property. So, once I get a wood-burning stove one day, I'll be able to, you know, burn fires and stay warm if I needed to. That is the kind of prepping you should be doing. If you're one of those people who wants to stay in a mortgage, thinking you're going to have the job that you have for the rest of your life... Um, you know, you're paying a lot of taxes because you're making a lot of money. Uh, you're living in a high tax area. You're living somewhere because it's convenient and close to resources, but you're like paying through the roof, like kind of like my, my mom lives in California. And yeah, she, you know, she has her house and everything and it's worth a lot of money, but it's worth nothing if you don't pay the taxes on that. Her taxes are like $3,000 a year. My taxes are $300 a year. You see the difference? So if, if that's my recommendation for prepping, you don't have to go in like, what's a word? You don't have to go to extremes with that, but you try to get debt free. That's the most, that's the thing that you can do the most because the debt is how the banks control you. It's how the government controls you. It's how they induce you to do things that you don't want to do that are against your morals. Look at what we just went through, you guys. With the pandemic. The people that gave in and got the Enoch the nation. The people that gave in were the ones that had to keep paying their bills, weren't they? That had to go to work. Who had to keep that job, that good paying job. And they said, well, if you want to come back, you got to get the Enoch the nation. So that's a very tough decision. Especially when you have people depending on you. When you have children or you're in a marriage. Your father supporting your family, and you've got a you know twenty five hundred dollar month mortgage payment. When they say you have to get this in order to keep your job, you're gonna probably do it. I don't care what your moral standing is. Most people give in. Now imagine if you had a little property somewhere that you paid cash for that you didn't spend very much on that's totally livable. Might not be near a job, but imagine you had that option. No debt, debt free. Then you would take it, wouldn't you? You would take it. Now, I've lived both lives. I lived a life where I was uh, up to my neck in debt. My children were small. We owned a house in California. And basically, uh, my mortgage was like 2500 a month. And this was back in the 2000s. And I had a well-paying job making six figures, but then I had a BMW car payment, not a BMW car payment, I had a car payment. Then I got an equity line under the house, bought my ex-wife a BMW, remodeled the kitchen, kids were in private school. I was living that life before all this. And I realized something, that my allegiance was to the pharmaceutical company I worked for because... In order to keep this lifestyle going that I was living, I had to keep that job. So basically, I was a slave boy. Whatever they told me to do, they were just like, I was like a puppet. They had their puppet strings, manipulating me, guilt tripping me, making me feel like I wasn't doing my job, making me try harder. I was just a little puppet boy. I wasn't, I, I hadn't achieved some kind of success because I was still a slave to them. And in every whim, that they decided to lay me off. They didn't care what responsibilities I had. They're like, here, here's your severance package. 20 grand. Get to step in. Good luck. And I was like, I'm never doing this again. I'm never going to be a slave to somebody else. And sometimes it's a long road to true independence. And you're still not completely independent. But at least you have a lot less dependence on these people who can turn your life upside down. 
Even a landlord has the ability to turn your life upside down. You guys, you guys have all been through it, haven't you? Living at a place for 10 years and the landlord decides to sell the property, where are you going to go? You start looking on the market, the rents have doubled about over what you're paying. What are you going to do? Where are you going to go? Who wants to be at the mercy of these people? When you could actually be independent from these people. And it's a lot easier than you might think. It's getting harder, but it is a lot easier than you might think. The land I got, I saved for three years. Six acres for $13,000. And it was a slow process. It was painful because I basically scrimped for three years to save up this money. And it's mine. It's full of trees and it's got water. It's on a hill. It's not very flat, but it's a place I can go. I can literally pull up a tra trailer if I had to. I'm not going to let someone tell me what to do. Tell me I have to get poked in order to keep a job. And the, this is how you should start thinking, especially as we go into these last days. You guys, this current structure of how things work in the, in the economy and jobs and all this is going away. I just saw a video show up on my feed. I haven't watched it yet, but it's called The Obsolete Man. I think uh, Shaking My Head Productions put it out. And it's got Schwab on it. And saying how we'll own nothing and be happy. The obsolete man. And that's what they're, it's going to be like soon. And if you don't have real property and real goods and a place to go. When it all hits the fan, you will become a slave to whatever their edicts are. Whatever they tell you to do, you're going to do it. Because you won't have a place to sleep at night. Or a job to go to. And this is what I'm trying to tell you guys. You know, I'm, I'm saying this out of love. Out of concern for the future. I don't want to see you have to face these choices. Okay, because it will make you begin to make choices that go against God and you will bring on bad things upon yourself. So that's the story with that. And I know some of you are stuck in situations, but if the door cracks open and God shows you a way through, then do it, you know, then do it. Because this is what he wants from us. He wants independence. It's just like the Israelites. He de delivered them out of Egypt into the wilderness. They lived in tents, didn't they? They moved. They were on the move. Well, we can have a modern day equivalent of that, can't we? Getting out of Egypt. Getting out of these big cities. Slaves to the landlords and slaves to these jobs who don't care about you. These jobs do not care about you. All they care about is their bottom line. They'll fire you in a heartbeat and turn your entire world upside down. You'll be scrambling to find a job. There's no job security with these people. So the best thing to do is create a life for yourself where you're not dependent on them. Yeah, you can still have a job, but you will have you could work a different job in less hours and still get by. So you're not stressed out. Spending your entire paycheck just to stay above the float, above water. Waiting for your body and mind to give out. Because that's what's happening to most Americans. They're on the edge. Their health is suffering. Their minds, their bodies, because they're being worked at these horrible jobs. 40, 60 hours a week. And, you know, they're at the mercy of the beast system. So, hopefully that all makes sense. For you guys and uh we'll be back on here next week i got a series of premieres scheduled for next week which are very timely these are past videos i'm going to be uploading next week that relate directly to what's going on right now i don't know if some people might call it prophetic i don't like to use that word because i'm not a prophet but Things we were saying a year or two years ago are coming back around full circle, happening right now in our current reality. And so we'll be doing some recaps of those videos. Likely I'll be in the chat with you guys during the airing of those videos. And that's pretty much it. I love each and every one of you. And I hope you guys have a great weekend. Talk to you soon. Take care and be safe, you guys.